Did you win your game, Adam? No, Jesus Christ. They started giving it to me and then I started shitting at them. Jesus. Yeah, it's turning into that already. Well, it's fun while it lasted. When's Surgeon Simulator coming out? <laughs> yeah. Um, so how many shifts do you guys have left to? Three. Five. Jesus. No, four. No, eight. How many do you actually have? You have five. two. You have five. Are you win all day, every day. Uh, Tuesday to Saturday. Oh, man. I'm in Tuesday. Friday, Saturday, I think. Uh, what the you? fuck? Where do my shifts go? My shifts disappeared. Uh, four in the restaurant and C and D. Four in the restaurant. Oh no, bar. Sorry, bar. Bar. Oh, what the fuck? What are you gonna be doing? Uh, I won't like you, fam. They don't need you. They never need. Wait, he's running you. food. Yeah, you're running food sometimes, and then like flipping the corner, one or the other, and it's like they really don't need. They have enough. They have more than enough staff. Like if the prime minister was staff, he'd be doing nothing. Yeah, they had busy. they had me on a restaurant shift when there was twenty two people total, mm. and I brought in one restaurant person, and she didn't do anything. I did everything. But that wasn't her fault, she was told not to do anything. I'm gonna quit my job. Like and subscribe to, to our podcast so that I can quit my job. Have we already started this or? No. Well, I have started recording, but I'll cut this bit out. No. I mean, like, yeah, it's probably decent. Cut it out and then put it back in at the end. Because I want to complain. I'm the one Hold on, I'll cut this out and I'll put it in at the start. But then I also won't cut it out, I'll just copy paste it so it'll be here in the middle as well. What? Alright, hold on. <gasps> Hello. What the fuck was that? Stop complaining, man. I'm, uh, I'm out of practice, it's been a while. What is... Poppington? Is that a good one? I think I'm. I think my icon has changed since last time. It has. You're a bro fish now. I'm bro fish now. Yeah. Uh, we'll show that at the end with wholesome content as well, uh, along with some not wholesome content, I guess. Oh yeah, jeez, we're about to save the. Yeah, it is kind of funny though. So it's kind of wholesome in a way, but. Okay. <laughs> it's also kind of fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> um, stay tuned if you want to see a gorilla. I think he's gonna die. Or know he's gonna die. Find out that he's gonna die. Yeah. Um. Oh, I haven't leaked the news, but. So. Here's what here's what's hip hop happening. Are you gonna finish? Or <laughs> come in? I, you just started laughing. I don't know. <laughs> um. Uh, we couldn't do last week because we were all very busy. Um, Peter's a simp, but that's You're okay because. <laughs> Yeah, but like Peter was gone for like three days, so I'm like a third of a simp because I was only gone for one day. <laughs> I was here every day. All right, everybody's a simp go. except Adam. Yeah. Adam's constantly in the podcast studio. He never <laughs> leaves. He lives here. Um, but that's okay. We'll just call it a a break because we went back to work and everything. So there was some adjustment needed, I guess. Yeah. And. Uh, that brings us into our first topic, the movie. Oh, does it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that a good segue? I yeah, think no, so. That's solid, man. Definitely could have went into, you know, work. Yeah, we'll get into that after. <laughs> <laughs> I want to start off on something light, like oh, uh, The House That Jack Built, which is a very light-hearted oh. movie. <laughs> Honestly, I'm surprised to forget what it was about. Uh, about a house, I think, or something like that. Yeah, um, Jack built a house. I don't know. Was... Wait, let's get into the movie afterwards. We have to complain about work first. All right. Uh, come back. Of being overruled. Listen, I'll timestamp it. Probably not. <laughs> Just keep watching. Just keep. It'll be in there. Just keep watching, guys. Eventually, yeah. All right. Uh, Go ahead. So what? All right, Adam. What's been yeah. your experience so far? With work, man, I loved it. 
I got paid um 130 euro to do four hours work. Are you wait are you what? How does that even work? Yeah. I got I did nine hours work and I didn't get paid that much. <laughs> Mate, I worked about 20 hours and I got 144. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you fucked idiots. What did you do? What is... What? Just, got, just like the government gave me money. On my pay stub. Did you do... Did you like sign up for anything? No. Am I retarded? What's happening? Yeah. What, what is that not... Wait, so how many hours? You did four hours. I remember... No, yeah, yeah, you did four hours. Because yeah, you were only in for hours. four hours the day after I was in. Yeah. I'm terribly confused. I'm dead. It is what it is. It is not what it is. This is unacceptable. <laughs> this is favoritism. Not acceptable. I uh, I get bullied in work. I get paid the correct amount when my colleagues are getting paid extra. Peter gets paid less than. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> you were talking about being bullied, yeah? Because this is ju this is actually starting to fucking infuriate. Oh, here we go. So I've been I've been back now for what about two weeks, right? Soon a bit, soon a bit, right? And when we were in the induction, we were told, you know, I'll bring your own mask. You know, I'll bring anything from home. Everything here will be supplied. Like you, like it's up, it's your choice to like you want to wear it or not, right? Like eventually, it's going to be up to your choice if you're going to wear it. But for now, it's going to be mandatory for you to wear it. So. I'm like, cool, I have a mask of my own, but obviously I'm not allowed to wear it. I have, like, so I, I always have one. But I'm walking, I walk in, wherever, I go to, my first shift is in the bar. I go to the bar and I'm like, hey, I see everybody's got those, like, face shields, like, the, the visors. And I'm like, okay, can I have one? They say, no, because you're from a different department. And I was like, but I'm working in your department doing you a favor. Yeah. Like, it, do, would you not rather your guests be more comfortable? So then I'm like, okay, cool. Then if I'm not gonna have a face shield, I'm probably gonna be stuck in a corner where I have to, like this very very limited um, contact with other people where I have to just you know I, like sort out plates and stuff. Yeah. Which you know fine. They're like no, you're 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 running food. And I was like, this doesn't make sense <laughs> for a place that wants to keep COVID out, right? Because not uh, not only is it like you know impacting the guests, now it's impacting me, and now I stick out like an absolute sore thumb, right? Because especially on that day when uh, my coworker did, did didn't decide to show up, um, I was the only one wearing you know the gray uniform. Mm -hmm. So and I'm the only black guy there. What? And I'm, and I'm the only one without a face mask. Why did you I say what as if? Th what it is? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> There's only one other black guy that works in the bar. <laughs> but like, he wasn't there. Yeah. And I stick, I stick on like a sore thumb because then, like, now if you're a guest walking in and you see everybody wearing like similar uniforms, they all have their own like face masks and visors and stuff, and then you see one lad with like, you know, the grey uniform without not wearing one, <laughs> you're assuming like, hey, like this dude is an idiot for not like bringing it. Yeah, he's dirty. He forgot it. Something. And I'm like, okay. There's like, this is some Monsieur Candy type shit right here. <laughs> exactly. So I keep. Explaining, being like, I can't, I, I feel like I'm making the guests uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable because I don't want them, I don't want the guests fucking breathing in my mouth. Like, just let me, you know, get get a, a face sh like mask. Like, I need one. So I'm starting to feel like a bit, you know, like I, like I want one now. And then they say, oh yeah, um, one of my uh, supervisors, take his. I'm like, that defeats the whole fucking purpose <laughs> of a face. I'm, I'm like, I'm breathing the same shit he. I was like, <laughs> And they wouldn't, they wouldn't afford me time to go disinfect it, so I just have to wear it. So it's either, I, it's either I wear it and breathe in the same, like, fucking particles he was breathing out, whatever, or, like, I just don't wear one at all. So, yeah. you know, I, I have to put up with that. I do everything possible you can do to, like, in, in a professional sense, oh. to, like, to, like, you need to get one. I've emailed, I've spoken, I've, ha I've spoken to the manager on four or five different occasions about this, about that and a locker. I've emailed him constantly before he had to email everybody again, be like, who needs one? I've emailed him constantly. I've done everything professional about this. It's, yeah. At this point, I might as well storm the fucking place and steal them. <laughs> if this is just the only way I'm going to be fucking safe. Yeah. Man, I'm, you're going to have I'm, mine. I'm, I'm quitting. No, I'm, I'm, 
tell you right now, there is a fucking lawsuit here waiting to happen if one of us just be like, yo, fuck this. Because I feel like I've been shacked for two weeks. I have not been given a mask. Yeah, that's kind of funny. I, 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 I have one downstairs, and they won't let me use it. So I tell them, so like, can I go get the mask down, downstairs? And they're like, is it like the one we give you? It's like, no. It's like, no, you can't use it. So I can't get one from you because I don't work in this department, even though I'm doing you a favor. But yeah. I, can't bring one, I, I can't wear the one I brought. What am I supposed to do? Then, to make matters worse, yesterday, the owner mm-hmm. of the fucking place, yeah, is, is G- in GM or? No, no, no. Big owner. Dog. Okay, yeah, yeah, big, yeah. yeah, big doggy. The owner is, is, is in his own little room in part of the restaurant, yeah, with his mates, you know, chilling. Nice. Dog. Uh, they, for some reason, I, I come in again and I tell them, I still don't have a mask. Can I get one? No, you can't get one. Okay, cool. They stick me in a corner, and I was like, no, fair enough. At least I'm not, like, waiting for people's food and, like, you know, running food, so I'm fine. One of the the, the uh, one of the managers who was, like, running the food was like, oh, I, Peter, I need your help running this food, whatever. And I'm like, I don't have a mask. I'm not helping you. And he's like, you, like come help me. And I was like, I'm not helping you. I don't have a mask. If you, if you want me to help, get me a mask. If you, like, like, if I don't get a mask, I'm not carrying the food. I'm not making yeah. other people feel uncomfortable with this. So then he leaves in, like, you know, a little bit of, like, a fuss. I was like, whatever. And then, um... The, the one of the, the restaurant manager was taking care of you know the owner's room, right in in the restaurant. It's him and like yeah. six employees. Like one person can do it. So then he then n- now I'm bi- I'm flat out in this corner. I have so much to do. I have to stack these plates. I have to wash these dishes. I have to fucking what? Well, I have to get get rid of all the bins. I have to polish all the cutlery. Like this is o- there's so much things to do for one person. It's actually just unfair. <laughs> but I'm I'm flat out here. I'm sweating like sweating buckets. Then the, the restaurant manager lad comes in and he's like, he goes to the to the, ma- the other manager who was running the food in the bar and says, "Hey, I need one of your staff to help me carry food out." Bear in mind, there is five people, right? You can carry two, if you if the max you can carry is two plates. You got two fucking hands. You make three trips, like minimal. It's like, oh, it's less than, it's less than fifty feet away from the kitchen. You can make like. They they might get the food, you know, a few seconds, like, th- yeah. behind each other. But it's fine. You can do this on your own. It is not that big a deal. Stop being a little fucking bitch about it. But whatever. <laughs> he comes in and call, He comes in and gets us. Gets w- and tells him, be like, I need somebody to come help me run this food. And I'm like, this dog better not look at me. Because I'm about to fucking flip my... I have so much to... Do. I'm helping them with fucking r- room service. I'm going, like... like I, I, I have too much on my, on yeah. my plate now. So then he comes up to me. He's like, listen... The restaurant manager really needs you. There's nobody else to help. You have to go. I'm like, mate, look at these plates. They are stacked up to the brim. I have to, no, I can't even stack these plates onto the trolley. I have to bring the trolley first because the trolley's that fucking full. Now they're still bringing more shit. Like, I don't have the time for this. He's like, no, go on. I go. I said, I still don't have a mask then. He's like, eh, l- look at the, one of these visors. Try and take one. It's like, this is other people. I want a new one. Like, we can't get you a new one. And they're like, okay. He, he said, you know what? He, the restaurant manager might be able to get you one. Go to him. No bother. I walk up to him, and I say to him, hey, I'm here to help, but I need a visor. I need one of those, like, face shields, whatever. He's like, I, I don't know where to get you one. And I'm like, okay, cool. I asked one. Of the, I asked some of the chefs if they have one of those, like, you know, the blue ones that just go over your mouth and uh, nose. They didn't have spare ones either. So this is, this is dope, right? This is cool. So then he then tells me to wait in the kitchen until like until like, until the kitchen is fully yeah until the food is properly ready and then I go call him. So I'm there for another five minutes. All I'm thinking about is those plates being stacked up more because <laughs> in the past nobody has a brain cell to think you know what the person who is is busy doing something else let me whilst I'm doing absolutely nothing you know stack these away or do something yeah, yeah. right because they they're, they're artificially busy they they make something up for them to do. So I'm just thinking, like, they, they're not going to help me. I'm going to be absolutely, like, flat out with this, whatever. Mm-hmm. And the food is getting done. Now, they've ordered those, like, like 100 quid, like, steaks. Like, these oh, big, yeah, yeah. The one big they put donuts. the rocks on. Yeah, like, these big donuts. So then I go call him. I go, I go call the, the restaurant manager. Be like, hey, um, you can come and, uh, get the ste- come and get the steak. You can come and get the food. And I'm assuming he'll carry the two steaks, whatever. And I'll carry these three other plates, whatever. Yeah. He's like, no. Take you. I'm gonna carry one of these plates. You carry the other steak. So he carries one of the steaks, and I I carry the other the other one. The other I'm one. Like, yeah. So then I'm okay. like, yeah. So I'm carrying w- one steak, and he's carrying one steak. I'm walking in like that. I'm like, this is fucking stupid. 
because now you're just <laughs> wasting my time. So then I walk in, and I'm like, man, you know I don't have a face, you know I don't have a face mask, man. And this is the owner. This is not gonna look good on me yeah. or, or on you. So then I walk, I walk, and I'm like, okay, I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. I'm thinking in my head, the most logical. Hold your breath, man. Is pretty much. <laughs> Other than that, is to let him go in, hand out the food, come back, and I hand it to him because they don't really see me. Yeah. So it's faster that way, and they don't see that I don't have whatever. He's like, no, come in. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I walk in and I stand there whilst, whilst he's serving. Whatever. He's got a, he's got a face shield. He's serving them. He comes to a kid without one, picks it off of him, and then goes back. I was like, your face shield means fuck all if I don't have one. Yeah. I'm like, okay, and obviously they're kind of mm. looking at me like, what's go- what's going on here? I have to go get the food, and I refuse to go back in there. So I'm standing there. Like outside the door, he walks out. I hand a plate to him. I have to go back and get the rest. I have to go get the veg. I have to go get the sauces, whatever. And I hand it to him. And I'm walk. And he's like, "Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Whatever." I'm walking away. I'm starting to deep it. This is fuck. Like, I could be fired for that because it, from their point of view, it looks like I just forgot mine. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, like they, they don't see he, the owner's definitely not gonna see the fucking like the process I've been going through to fucking get one. Yeah. And then and then I don't and then I don't get and then I work a flat out I don't get a fucking break, and then they try to keep me later, as like. I was like, get the fuck out of here. I'm yeah, well, that that's just standard. Like, if you're in till nine, you're in till half ten. I'm no 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 no. I I, I refused. I was like, I'm I'm not I'm not doing you lot a favor if you can't get me a fucking mask. Yeah. I'm not I'm not staying any longer. There's no point. I, it, it's roster from eleven. I'm going from eleven. Whether you wh- whether you need help or not, that's what what you want. What you need to do ain't got nothing to do with me, big man. Ain't got nothing yeah. to do with me. As soon as I see the clock hits eleven, I bet I'm going home. If you can't do me the courtesy of at least giving like, giving me at least a fifteen minute break, or getting me a fucking face mask so I'm safe, I'm not. I'm yeah. not doing solids. I'm not. Yeah. I'm so, like, I'm genuinely so fucking tempted to look into fucking suing this place. I'm like, I was that fucking heated. <laughs> well, I, no, man, could you I'm, imagine? I'm, I'd, I'd help. I'm, I'd testify. Man, I'm not, like, Adam, like, you're laughing, but I'm not joking. Like, I'd I testify will testify for the hotel. You prick. <laughs> You'd be like, this man is a bitch. You shouldn't believe him. Fine. He forgot his face mask. Fuck me, man. And I'm the only one who doesn't have one. Man, you yeah, should just get coronavirus out. and then uh, give it to Bart. Oh, give it to the owner and then <laughs> Bart. <Yeah>, Bart. <laughs> um, and then die, and then we'll sue the hotel on your behalf. I probably won't. I will. Hotel makes a lot of money. I I don't care. It's easier than working there, and I'll get more money. Yeah, I feel like it, you would sue and then they would just pay you out straight away man i've been seriously seriously considering just quitting i just don't want to work there anymore i just really 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 don't um See, i don't mind i don't mind working cmb like i can get over that yeah there, like because i'm used to the shit that goes on there but when they're making me work in bar and restaurant i just they're just not as enjoyable and the people are awful so it's just <laughs> yeah. hard, dude. Man, like, <sighs> let me tell you a story. Uh, sixty-two verses long. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, i have okay. I've only been in one day. I think, yeah, one day. I've only been in one day so far. Um, and that day was okay. It was kind of shitty. Because it was one of those days where there was nothing to do and you were trying frantically to look like you're doing something. And then yeah, you get in, yeah. like, well, this probably only happens to me because I get bullied in there, but whatever. Um, <laughs> But, like, they're like, oh, what are you doing? And I'm like, the, I, you know, I'm do- doing something, trying to be helpful because I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing. But anyway. I'm um, on yeah, I'm, like, wandering from room to room, making sure there's no... Uh, dirt on the walls. Yeah, r- rapists. I'm rapist hunting. Um, but at the end of the day, they were like, "All right, there's a 15 person dinner, and there's a 22 person dinner." We were like, "That's cool." 
and they were like all right john you did a 22 person dinner with the restaurant manager and the other four people who are in cmb you all do the 15 person dinner with the cmb manager and i was like that seems a bit weird but you know whatever 22 people like i can do it myself obviously i've done things with 22 people before just myself like without the manager um but i feel like your resources could be more evenly distributed but whatever that's fine um 22 person dinner thing it goes fine not not a problem really we go through the whole thing we serve dessert i'm supposed to be gone at nine o'clock i'm already after being in there for nine hours at that stage um we just served them dinner at, at about five to nine i said right okay i'll wait clear up for dessert and then i'll say that i'm going mm-hmm. so it gets to half nine and i can't find anybody to tell me to clear up dessert and these are like high profile people so i kind of need to ask to make sure i'm doing the right thing they're yeah, like yeah. i heard one of them asking if the wine was french oh. so uh they're those kind of people yeah but um yeah half nine couldn't find anybody and then i go around and i'm like looking around and then like i don't i was in the kitchen and i left the kitchen but then when i came back to the kitchen the restaurant manager was there and he was just eating chicken and i was like um yo i'm supposed to be gone at nine o'clock can we clear up dessert and then i can head off and he goes uh well what time is it now i said oh it's it's half nine like it's it's 25 to 10 basically and he goes well you can stay till 10 and i was like or i could just clear it and go or or i could leave right now and you could clear it and he was like well you know we kind of need it cleared but uh we're not ready to do it yet so i was like all right and i went and cleared it myself and then left and i didn't say anything to him (laughs) i literally just left without talking to him i got a tenor tip too that was kind of nice um but yeah no that was super annoying and also um carl was working that day uh, and one other person and uh, they just left without saying anything to anybody (laughs) i went and i found our manager i found a cmb manager and uh, i was like yo like i need to go now it's like 10 o'clock and he was like yeah that's fine thanks john and i was like i have the rest gone and he was like honestly i've no idea i can't find them anywhere <laughs> i was like all right lit and then i go downstairs and they're in the canteen eating chicken <laughs> oh, nice. just about to leave so that was kind of funny but that really annoyed me with the ma- uh, with the dessert stuff like because people don't want their dessert plates in front of them for that amount of time no, it no. was easily 40 minutes like True. and he was just wasting my time and they were i don't know it's just it's such a stupidly run place and mm-hmm. also there's about twice as many restaurant staff as CMB staff, well, as useful CMB staff. Um, <laughs> so that doesn't include Peter. Um, oh, and no, I'm only yeah. joking. Um, and I don't understand why they just can't get them in. Why do we need to work restaurant? It's stu- it's yeah, so stupid. Yeah. I hate it. I'm gonna quit. My streaming career starts today. Tune into my stream streaming directly after this podcast. <clears throat> Like has really frustrated me about work has been the lack of clarity on everything. So obviously yeah. the, the mask situation, well that's that's one piece is like the lack of clarity. I don't know like what else I'm supposed to do with that. But the, the other one is the payment scheme, right? So for most people who, like who don't who aren't in Ireland or who who are not like you know working, we were get because we were kind of like temporarily laid off. We were getting paid 350 a week to pretty much just sit in our houses and do nothing, mm-hmm. which was grand, right? And it's, it, whenever, like, you know, Ireland is, like, opening up again, obviously, large gatherings, which we specialize in, is still kind of, you know, prohibited. So, and even if it wasn't, there's not a lot of people rushing to book a wedding within the next, within the next week. You know? yeah. So, we're, we're going to be pretty much jobless, in ter- like, in terms of, like, events and stuff we can do, like, large-scale events, anyway, that can, like, employ all of us, for, like, a good few, like, maybe four or five months like there's gonna be nothing so we all kind of anticipated like we all kind of knew that and we were just assuming that we were either going to stay on this like this covid payment until like we started to get proper work again like a proper inflow of work 
or they were gonna like they were gonna they were gonna do some some other kind of scheme. But we just we all pretty much assumed they were gonna finish on the previous week. We then get called in and get told that because the hotel's opening up, we're not like our department is gonna open up as well for obviously no good reason because there's nothing to say. <laughs> yeah. And we we get told we get told a complete bunch of lies pretty much, right? So he tells us we're op- like we're opening up now. From from our point of view, we don't know whether or not to cancel the COVID payment yoke because all they tell us is we're opening up. We don't know anything about like uh, about what hours, co- are if open, hours what events, work, yeah. exactly. So like if if the government determined that we needed around three fifty to to like you know be to fine, live. yeah, yeah, to live. Th- th- there's pretty much no way we can work this thirty five hours to get the same amount of money because obviously no offense. So it doesn't make sense as to why you'd open up and then get us, have us be paid less, right? Yeah. But whatever, whatever. So we we ask him about the, the payment because obviously none of us want to lose out on money. We're making like decent money by just doing nothing. And we you know want to keep it that way. We ask him what the payment scheme is going to be like. He then says what the government has decided to do is some kind of like sub- uh, subsidy. subsidy. Yeah. yeah. So in which, like, they will pay, they will continue to give you your three fifty if you work the certain amount of hours they had set for you, right? Mm-hmm. So then I'm, like, so I'm, ch- I'm sitting and I was like, you know, that's fair enough. Like, that's grand. I don't mind, like, because in my head I know there's no way I'm working up to thirty five hours. There's no events. There's nothing. No, so yeah. the most I'm gonna have to do maybe ten, twelve hours a week, and I'm still gonna get my three fifty. I don't mind taking those twelve, like hours out of my week to do it, that's no problem. So then a, a lot of us started, one, one, one of my coworkers, whatever, she started to, t- like, started to say, like, it would be weird, though, because, like, she said the government has, has like, has, um, given that certain amount of people get certain amount of hours a week, right? So if you worked a lot during, like, the start of the year, you were going to get a lot more hours, like, allocated to you for you to work to get your 350. And mm-hmm. she said it would be very unfair if, let's say, somebody who hasn't worked as much gets allocated five hours, and then somebody else who's worked, like, you know, quite a bit over the, the beginning of the year gets allocated, like, gets allocated, like, 18 hours, and they yeah. still get paid the same 350. That doesn't seem fair. And I was like, no, fair enough. That is a, that is a fair point. So then, lo and behold, we get, our, we get our payment. It's nowhere near the 350. And, in fact, I'm losing money. Yeah. I'm losing yeah. even more money in terms of what I'm, I'm getting supposed to be paid. So I'm like, why am I? So I, the, the thing that annoys us now is like, why would you open up for us to lose money? I to, to lose even more money when you could, there's so many different like, vi- like wa- avenues you could have went with this, like yeah. just not open C and B, because there is quite literally nothing C and B could have done by a few meetings which could have been handled by the other department. Yeah, but I think our manager came close to that. What he meant to do, you know, like he. He took on what the the hotel told him was happening, you know, about how we were getting paid. So how it's done is if you work 20 hours, that's what they put us in as. If you work 20 hours, you get the full 350 or you get something from the government, right? Um, but then they he never explained what happens if you don't get 20 hours. He just kept saying, these are going to get 20 hours. Don't worry about it, which we all knew wasn't going to happen because there's just no way he can guarantee that especially now maybe before sure but mm. there's no way he can guarantee it so we were all kind of just a little bit confused and then um but i think what he thought he had to do i think what he was meant to do was bring in four members of staff and give them all 20 hours and leave the other one the covid because we can't guarantee them hours you know he was meant to he was meant to have the 20 hours or however many hours to give to a couple people who would then be continuing to give the 350 to mm. instead of basically he gave seven people 100 quid instead of three people 350 do you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah it, it makes no sense for no reason he brought us in and we're just losing money because of his decision to, decision to bring us in do you know what i mean like we have stuff going on like little stuff you know like not stuff where we need eight people working he said the other day we have 11 people working uh like on the roster but mm. there's not hours 20s hours even in like he's putting us in bar and restaurant now even then it's still kind of like tough to give 20 hours to everyone do you know what i mean and it just seems like it's just 
and like he, he whenever you put into like a different like um into a different like department it's obviously this isn't this isn't the like department we signed up for i don't know the ins and outs of what i'm supposed to be doing so you walk in and they just they can just kind of leave you there and be like, oh yeah, like it's, it's they really just throw you in the deep end and like, all right, float. Yeah. Like w- my first bar session, man, I could not. I was so fucking mad. I walked in and I was like, okay, what am I? Sp- I'm assuming going to be in the corner because you don't ha- you need you you need to have at least a brain cell and you like if you have a brain cell, you're fine. Like you don't ha- like there's nothing there's nothing too mentally like strenuous. You're not thinking too much. You just it's just a lot of work, but you can do it. The kitchen's like behind you, you're grand. But then when it comes to like, you know, handing out food and stuff like that, in our department, we know where the fuck every single table is. Yeah. We know the process, we know who to go to, we know like in which way everything is done. So it becomes mindless work. When you come into like a new situation, obviously I don't I don't know the layout. I don't everything's apparently has been changed. I don't I definitely don't know the layout. I haven't worked here in about a year and six months or something. So I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. And they, they just leave you to your own devices. So then I asked the I asked some of the staff, you're like, hey, what's the table layout? And they're like, hmm. Like, well, yeah, if you don't It's the same, it's the same as us. They just know, like, you know. No, well, look, like, I asked, yeah. You know, I asked, yeah, yeah, they just know. I asked them, what's yeah. the table layout? They're like, hmm, I don't know. I'm like, if you don't, if you can't fucking explain it to me, how do you expect me to know? And they're like, oh, just go around, just, you know, asking who, whose food it is. I'm like, do you know how stupid that sounds? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a box. Like I'm gonna get a plate of wings and just walk around screaming. Who are the wings? Is that <laughs> really? Is that what you want me to do? Fucking oh my god, this place is so stupid. I don't know why they they came back, man. I don't know why they are they that greedy for money. Yeah, I don't know. It's just. Just yeah, it just doesn't make sense. It's it's like pe- it's like children making decisions based off literally nothing. It's it's like it's like the whoever is in charge wakes up and looks at the stars in the night and he's like the stars are telling me to bring everybody back today and so <laughs> I am going to do it. And then the next night the stars tell him that the government is going to give everybody 350 for coming back to work. So he tells everybody that. So I don't I don't know. It's they're literally on LSD. I don't understand what's happening ever. Also, it's just yep. obviously we, we won't give names now. You know, I I do like names, but I won't this time because they do be breaking the law this Saturday. Um, oh so my god! There was a obviously they break the law all the time. Just let's put that out there. But this this in particular. So the rules, big gatherings is you can have a room filled with fifty maximum fifty people, including staff, right? Mm-hmm. And of course, what do we go do on fr- on Saturday? We book a 50-person wedding. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be probably, what, at least three or four staff, maybe, including managers as well, which is like five, six even. Um, yeah. And I doubt it's 50 on the dot people. What so about it's easily the, more what than about that. What about the other event? Like and then, time? yeah, and then on in between the, spa- in the space of a, a six-inch wall, um, there's going to be an. I don't know how big that is though, but I would assume it's probably around 50 people because you would definitely, you would want the max amount of people there to make it mm. interesting because we have a, so the there's a 50 person wedding on and then there's a 50 person. Oh wait, can we say the name of the event? What do you mean, like a wedding? No, no. There's a there's an event on. Do you remember the thing last year where the guy from Love Island was there? We just oh yeah. Friday. Oh, is that on this Saturday? Wait, I'm yeah. not even working in CMB this Saturday. Never mind. Where are you working? In a fucking bar, man. But I'm not. Oh. I'm not doing it because I have to go to a communion. Oh fucking hell! I hate you, man. <laughs> Our roster is one to three in the morning, fam. On Saturday? Is it actually? Yeah. Like a yeah. fourteen-hour shift. Y- yes, that's like. Man, that's so one funny. One, it is one to three a.m. That's so funny. On when? On Saturday. I mean, 12 to 8. Are you scum? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I hate this place, bro. <laughs> Excellent. This is, this is such bullshit, man. But obviously I'm not going to be until 8. I'll be probably until like... 11, 12 or... Like they'll put me on for service, definitely. 
that's one of our code is called like revenue you know the place that pays us whatever to like ask like what is this scheme about and apparently there's no such scheme like it i feel like what the scheme is right is literally just the hours you work is just what you're getting paid and anything yeah like, like, and 350 is just a cap right 350 is just a cap of if you work 35 hours if you work 40 hours 350 is a cap they will pay and then the extra five hours is up to the hotel to pay at a later date that is all i feel what that that scheme is i don't think it's anything of like you have an allocated amount of hours that you have to work to get the thing because we've like i last week i worked over like what like i don't know how many hours i worked last week like maybe like 15 16 hours or yeah and then this week i've worked i've damn near worked over 20 hours surely I'm I'm, a, and I'm I'm about to with a 14 hour shift on fucking Saturday. Sure, look, man, so like, be grand. So, like, don't worry about it. You're stressing too much. It, but big man, if I <laughs> if I don't make if if because clearly, obviously at the start of the year and like the year before that, like I worked like you know a decent a decent amount. I'm assuming that the allocated amount of hours I'm gonna get is probably around in the teens. So like 17 hours, 18 hours, whatever. I'm definitely going to surpass that goal of like they set for me. If yeah. I don't get paid three fifty, well then it's bullshit. So I don't know if it's I don't think it's for us because we I think that's for full time work is the full three fifty part time work it's the two oh two oh three is around the max. And then so like that's that's the government, right? And then our the hotel have decided that they will allow up to fifteen hours extra like over time, over the twenty, over the twenty hours, they will then pay that other fifteen hours. If that makes sense. Mm. So you get two around two hundred from the government, which is the max, which is the twenty hours, which makes sense with our, um, with our wages, like our minimum wage. You know, twenty hours would be around two hundred euro, just a couple euros extra, and mm -hmm. then you're allowed to work fifteen hours on top of that, which they will pay for. So that's. Um. So basically, you get paid. I don't care where the money's coming from. So, but, but basically, you just get paid, uh, you can get paid the a money. Of Thirty-five hours. Man, if I yeah, okay, that's fine. But is it, Whatever. See, and that's, it, that's the thing that was annoying because the only reason I was going in was I was like, like at the days I'm like, listen, I don't want to go. I I genuinely don't want to go into work today because first of all, I don't feel fucking safe, and it's in an apartment. I don't know anybody, and like I'm gonna be alone. Yeah. The days I don't, don't want to go in, and the only thing like motivating me to go in is that like. I'm gonna get closer to this like amount of hours to like to where I get the full three fifty. So that's the only thing motivating me to go in. If I know like I'm just getting paid the amount of hours I'm in, then why the fuck am I going? I don't need I, I don't need the money that bad. Like, cause the the, the jump between like obviously a hundred like the hundred and forty four quid I got I got paid and the three fifty, it like how you know how vexed you would be if you could if you just worked two more hours and you would have got three fifty. Yeah, I know. That was the only motivating factor for me to go. That was literally the only motivating factor. What happens factor. if if yeah. if I yeah. okay? So hypothetically, this is why I was skeptical about it from the beginning. Hypothetically, Peter, you work at uh, twenty hours and get paid three fifty, and I work mm -hmm. thirty four hours and get paid three fifty. Mm -hmm. How does that work? I don't know. Um, I That's why I just doesn't make sense. Like. It doesn't. I was talking to I was talking to someone in the bar, and he said he worked fifty hours and got paid three fifty. Yeah, I was told that as well. I'm like, this, this, there's no clarity as to what's going on. Like, I feel like in his case, he, I think he was told something on the lines like, at a later date, all that money is going to be slowly. Yeah, it's back so to you him. know, um, you know the top up thing in our thing. You got should have got one cent on your pay pay slip. Top up. Mm. That's what that's supposed to be. That's what the extra. Like that's our overtime, if that makes sense. Our over the twenty four twenty hours pay, and that's where he was probably meant to. I don't know. Yeah, he, basically that'll probably come back to him. They, I think they just couldn't, like, I guess legally give him the money for the, like they can only give him the money for the thirty five hours, but they will mm -hmm. slowly add that, the extra fifteen hours back in over time because they can't just le right now, they just can't legally give him that money. That's why. But like, why lie? That's, that's the thing. Yeah, like, I doubt that was explained to him. You know, yeah, it definitely was explained to him. And yeah. it, I feel like in the long term, in the long, like in the long term, it's go there's gonna be they're gonna use it in a way to kind of scam him out of his money because like he's not gonna know 
like how to claim it back or what's going on. So they could just slowly yeah. be like, oh, you're only entitled to this amount of money or something like that. Like, it's just why, why lie to us completely about all of this shit? Because if <laughs> we were told from the get-go, like if you were just told from the get-go, yeah, you're not, you're not going to get your 350. Like realistically, if you were to just sit back and collect the dough, which is like, which is what benefits or whatever. If you just sit there and just claim the benefits, you, you honestly would make more money than actually working. Yeah. Doing a job that is that is very physically demanding, and you're very underpaid. If you were just sat home and just strong man like me, even no, but I mean, regardless of whether you're strong or not, it's still physically demanding in comparison to sitting on a chair and collecting two hundred and three quid a week. Yeah, I I did fucking how many hours? Got paid one hundred and forty four. You did four. I got paid one hundred and thirty. This is come on, man. But I did my four hours better than you. So that That is true. Yeah. (laughs) Um. And then they make you feel bad for not coming in. They try to like guilt trip you. Yeah. A, l- a lot of us are starting to you know, cop onto the idea like the rest of the apartments we don't fucking need me other than to do the fucking dirty work. So then uh, if you're like a lot, a lot of people like some of our mates that we're all sitting in bars, just be like, oh yeah, I'm not coming in. And uh, they just put in a group chat. Oh, there's a there's a shift there in the bar if anybody wants to take it. But they know for sure they're not going in. Yeah. And then the, the manager be like, oh, we need staff. We need staff. Uh, come do us a favor. I was in restaurant from like 8 until like 1 the other day and then I went home and then I got a text message from the manager being like hey we are, there's no bar staff do you want to come in are you skunk <laughs> on the same day on the same day <laughs> I not. what did you say yeah, no <laughs> <laughs> I went in <laughs> what the fuck could I go in no <laughs> have you lost your goddamn mind I, no fuck that that's really He's funny like, oh, they don't have enough staff the fuck they don't yeah, they do have enough staff. They just don't want them to come in. They probably they probably let them yeah. stay on the three fifty a week. That's what I think it is. I think our manager's gone. Yeah, you have to come in, and their manager's gone. If you want to stay on the COVID payment, stay on the COVID payment. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I think that's that's what's happened, and that's why we're being shafted with all the and these things because they've just gone. It's fine. We'll get C and B have been forced to come in. We'll just get them to do it. Exactly, and the, the reason being, they pay us less. Yeah. Bar gets, bar gets paid more. Like the staff gets paid more. Yeah. We get paid less, but like it's it's probably it's bet is in their best interest to have little grunts doing the fucking hard work. And then have like their you know, their their bar specialists who make all the cocktails and shit just stay behind the bar and do the just do that. Yeah. Man, I can make cocktails. Man, I, it's just oh fuck off. Peter will make them a uh, red I, wine I, and Fanta. Have you guys <laughs> I've even been told. To, oh shit, that's a vibe, bro. Like, I'm, I, I, no cap, that's a fucking vibe. Anyway, um, it's actually a thing in Spain apparently. But um, have you guys cancelled your payment yet? Yeah. yeah. I don't think I should have. Honestly, I I, I haven't yet. No, I don't. I was, Carl's still getting I don't his, and he hasn't signed off. He, he, did he yeah. Well, I mean, I still got it this week. Yeah, I think. And I I think I'm still gonna get it next week. As well, I don't, I don't know whether I'm if I'm supposed to or not. I I, I just because we weren't, weren't if you go onto the website, it tells you that you have to do it like before you start work back, and it also asks you to tell them the date that you started work. And I so I took I came off it like a few days after I went back, and I was like, do I put the date or do I like just lie and say tomorrow's date? But then I assume they can like check your pay slips kind of thing because they like have access to that stuff so i yeah. didn't risk it and like put in the few days before but yeah so i don't know like, how do you tell them that like i will like we were i we were told we wanted like we were to- under the guys so the way he j- like the fucking manager explained it to us right he said to us that we were still going to get the 350 but by working a certain amount of hours so just don't change anything it's just work and then because you've worked, they will give you the 350. Yeah. So it was on our end not to do anything. All we, all, all we have to just work our hours. And then yeah, but on. but legally, if something happens, that's not going... Like, if you get a call someday and they're like, yo, you're back in work and you're still on the payment, what's going on here? You can't be like, oh, well, my manager said I can do this. You know, they won't care. It's still your thing. It's your issue, like... That's why I was worried about it. Well, I wasn't really worried about it. But that's why I did come off it. Because they're not going to be like, all right, JAL, let me give your manager a ring, you know. Hmm. 
Like, they're not going to give a shit, like, what drugs people were on when they told you what was going to happen, like. I feel like it's really surely, unfair, though. It's ter it's yeah. it's really bad what they're doing. But I mean, like, it, okay, for example, the whole. No, but I feel like no, I don't. I don't feel like they have a leg to stand on with that stuff because obviously with the whole subsidy, subsidy, whatever the fuck that word, scheme, all right? They went to the managers to that and explained that to them, and it's up to them to explain that to us. If we were given false information, surely, like, I. I surely I can't be held accountable. I was given false information. I was told one thing, and we've all been led. If you ask, if you ask four uh, members of our staff what's going on with the payment, you get four different answers. Yeah. Like surely, sure, sure, that's account for something. That's be some accountability on, in terms of like the, the higher ups to be like, like this is your fault. Yeah, it's stupid. Fuck but um. Uh, fuck the police. I'm moving to uh, New Zealand. Terrible. I'm out of this bitch. Somebody give me a grant to move to New Zealand and oh. live in the Shire. Sean asked the, the manager, being like, hey, like, I don't know what's going on with the payment, yo, bro. I'm supposed to get off it. He's like, oh, I'll, I'll give him a call for you. And then he tells him, yeah, go off it. Tell everybody else that. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Why would he do that? That would make that. I mean, they just don't care. They really. This is, this is just it. They just really, yeah. genuinely don't care. This has to be the worst job I've ever, like, worst run job I've ever, like, I've ever seen. Yes. For you to be manager, you have to have basic fucking organizational skills. There is absolutely nothing. And conversation, okay. We finish work. We move on to the movie. That was a ready. weird that was a weird one. It was super interesting. I don't think it was like that good necessarily, but it was super interesting. And um not as in it wasn't good, but it just it wasn't like Sorry, I had to step away for a second. <laughs> On stuff and, um, yeah, it's just wild. yeah, it was a it was a wild film. There is. Uh, can you hear what's going on in my house? Yeah. <sighs> Maybe there's a serial killer making a house. Uh, okay, problems. hold on. I have to take note of the time. Cut this out. Um, forty nine minutes. Mamie, big angry. Amy's big angry. Everybody's big angry. Um. Okay, hold on. Just give me two seconds, and then we'll yeah. start the m the movie conversation. Okay, that's cool. Alright. How how did I claim back my cat? Uh, eleven years. Did I start at eight? Mm -hmm. I don't know how. To be honest, I never really do it. I should, but. Um. Yeah, you just go onto uh, you go onto revenue and you do like the tax certificate thing. It's just it's there, and then once they have it, they'll give you the money. If you have anything to give back. Mm. Um. Okay, movie. Yeah. Uh. So the movie. Yeah. Okay. The movie we watched was the house that Jack built. It was one of the fucked ones on Adam's whiteboard. Um. Really weird movie very strange i kind of enjoyed it though i really enjoyed it to be honest with you i was terribly um confused by the ending for a good while but i thought it was super interesting i thought it was super it was like um it was like something that a low budget movie would do but it was not a low budget movie and it was done i don't know i just think the shots were really weird like there was a bit where they were like descending ladders, but they were like, oh yeah, in yeah. two different places, and I, I was just. And then they were in bubbles. Yeah, and they were in bubbles. I kind of tuned out to be honest, and then I tuned back yeah. in, and they were in bubbles, and I was like, what the hell? And then they were like, in the giant's causeway. <laughs> it looked like. <laughs> yeah. Um. But, yeah, it's not yeah, at I all. Simultaneously understood it, which was weird. 
Yes. Like, if, not under, I didn't understand like why they were going down the ladders, like why they were. But I understood what was happening. You know what I mean? Yeah, but but. Uh, yeah, and I did too at face value. But is there like a deeper meaning that I didn't understand? Is the que- I don't understand whether so, I understand everything or not. Yeah, but the word so the that you know the way it's done in what is it called? Incidents, right? The, yeah. The first incident, second, third, and then the one for that is called catabasis, and I looked that up, and that's, uh, it's a term used in Greek mythology and other like religious kind of stuff, and it's done in poetry for a descent to the underworld. So that's clearly what it was right it was him being a score like he 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 at the end of the movie he died in his house that's like you remember when they're shooting oh yeah through the little hole he dies and it it's you see it shooting a body and you're wondering why is it showed that shot but really it's not shooting that body it's it's him dying he he goes into his house he's sat in his house and he dies and he doesn't actually have a hole into a random tunnel Underworld. you know that's that yeah. this the old man who he's talking throughout the whole thing is a it's, it's like, he's like a character, I guess. Yeah, like, you know, a, like a fairy man type thing. Yeah, yeah, guide to the to the underworld, and then so he's descending, he's descending, and uh, he gets to a place. Do you remember when he gets to? This is my take on it, by the way. I didn't look up. I, all I looked up was that what that word meant. But mm-hmm. do you remember when he gets to the window and the man says, uh, "We have no access here," and he's yeah. looking out, and it's the fields. I think that was heaven. Because I know that's weird because it was still under, but earlier on. Yeah, but we he said he liked that. the the yeah, sight said thing. It, it was the only time he felt peace was in the breathing of the fields. Yeah. So I think if he had, he was a good person, he would have been brought there and just let go out and sit in the fields, and that's why he was crying while looking out onto the thing because he realized that the decisions in his life led to him not being able to, you know, be at peace, and he had to. Not he wasn't a, yeah basically that he wasn't able to be at peace he has to go down I don't even understand where he was gonna go but um and then he gets to the depths of hell place and I think I can assume that that's more than likely a thing the same way in the poetry or Greek mythology that area where you decide to you know where he could see he could see a way out you know you could see a way out of hell yeah um over the broken broken thing and he had to make the decision to either just go back up and live in hell or try and make his way out i assume that's in some stuff because it would be a weird thing to just kind of make up because it was just i didn't really yeah, understand uh, what the fuck was going so, on so but part. okay like, but like what okay so he fell did that mean like he fell into a worse pit fell, of hell yeah he fell to the depths of hell that's like the worst worst part oh okay so it's like a so like, it's, it's like, like a it's like levels s- I guess, circles you know? yeah the like, seven circles yeah. of hell type beat yeah and he was going to the the very worst part and that's the rift he could either live his life because wh- the closer they got the more the noise remember there's a high-pitched noise yeah the louder that got which meant the more suffering i think the further you go down the more suffering you endure mm. and when he got when they when they're stood over that pit it's this massive like it's the you can actually feel it like at the, the ringing in your ear and i think he, he he you get to that point and the point of it is you can either decide to risk it and try to get over to the I don't know where it would lead him. I don't know if it's out. Like I don't know if he then he survives or something, but or he goes to heaven, um, or he can just settle with what he has now. Because he said, you know, he says at the start, like I'm not meant to leave you off, leave you off here. You just said you want to know everything, so yeah. But um. So okay, so throughout the movie, they were he was talking to your man, talking to her while yeah, while he was descending so like you're you're led to believe that he's like in therapy or something or like he's in prison and he's just talking to some guy yeah but it's actually his chauffeur to the underworld yeah and i think the reason that 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 person exists is deciding where you go in hell because he asks him to give his life stories and every time he tells a person when uh, why he killed someone or why he he did this thing he's always asking like or not but whenever he's talking about it your man always says why you know like why did you do that what was your reasoning behind it and i think it's to find out what the actual you know like the actual thing whether it was genuine, yeah whether he's valid, evil whether or it was accidental whether it was thing and i think that's why he didn't because realistically like he said he killed over 60 yeah um which is a lot so you would assume that that's all right you go to the depths of hell but i think the way he gave his argument 
of like the you know finding the beauty in death and and uh, it, it killing as an art form instead of instead of just he wanted to kill people it was he he had to do it for art you know which i think is why he didn't get dropped off at the depths of hell why he actually made got it you know on the middle section or whatever the fuck i don't know yeah with oj but it, uh, it was it was wild it was a crazy yeah, was, experience from start to, to finish and um, i also think that there's a part where you can as you can uh guess that he's actually dead so you know the way you said at the thing where assume he's and obviously i did as well for the whole thing until that last part i was like oh, okay but um I was assuming he's in therapy, but there's a part where he goes, uh, I have a weird taste in my mouth. And I think that was because he died and there was, he said, uh, how was it? Was it an acidic taste? He said, I think. Hmm. I can't remember. But I think it was acidic and I think it was because he died. And then I assume your mouth tastes not very good when you're dead. So I think that's why he had that thing. And he said, you're going to have to get used to that because that's the way your body is now. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, you yeah. don't taste. Because otherwise, I mean, there's no, like, I mean, the water is not acidic, you know, it's like. Yeah. I think I think that's what it was anyway. I don't know if it was, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. definitely a thinker. Um, I really, yeah, I really, really enjoyed a lot of it. I enjoyed, I enjoyed it because it was, um like, kind of short miniature storylines that yeah, all yeah. added up to a bit one big thing. Like, I didn't really have to pay that much attention to it. I just kind of sat back and enjoyed it. And also, there was a lot of really smart stuff in it. Like, like the bit with the street lamps. Yes, I was just going to say that. I was, thinking ab- I was thinking about that for days afterwards. <laughs> yeah, it was such a good, like... Yeah, super good analogy. Yeah. Uh, hmm? with the street lamps? Um... Yeah. He was talking about his his need to kill and like how the feeling came over him and he described it as when he's walking under street lamps like on a street uh, when he's walking towards one the shadow is behind him getting closer and that's the feeling uh, of wanting to kill somebody getting closer to him when he's directly under the street lamp it's at its densest and it's right underneath him and that's when he absolutely has to and that's when he kills and then as he moves away from it the shadow grows outwards and that's his happiness like growing out yeah but then he approaches another one and there's like a point where the between like at the exact midpoint between the two where the shadow in front and behind is equal but he continues to move forward and the need to kill again it overcomes the joy that he got from killing previously until eventually he's underneath the next street lamp and it keeps going on and on yeah um really uh really really good analogy and i don't it was kind of weird though like they said he had OCD, which only oh, yeah, really was, came into it in the beginning. That's the thing, because um, the killing cured his his OCD. Yeah. He says that at the start. He said because because it was it was uh, because it was kind of about him growing as well as a mer- yeah not as a person. He didn't really grow as a person, but like he gets better at everything. You know, like at the the first killing or second killing, I think the woman in the house where yeah, she survived. Get back in, yeah. He he learns from that. And then he he takes away his OCD in the same way with when he tries to strangle. Yeah, the same way, same one, actually, where he tries to strangle the woman and doesn't kill her. In the next one, he strangles the woman with ease. The woman yeah. takes back to, or goes back to her apartment. He kills her with ease because he can then thing. And he says he started not caring about... Uh, like how yeah, messy not, it is. Yeah, and stuff. not caring about messy because in the end, it, no, it doesn't matter. Nobody's going to catch him anyway, you know. And yeah, he said he started it's feeling easier invincible. to do it in plain sight. And you see that when he goes back to the house with the two frozen bodies in the funny positions. Mm. Uh, he, just, <laughs> he just runs he over just your one. In. Yeah, he just runs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was fucking mental. Yeah. He's just like, I just had to do it. Like, she was yeah. just there. I just had to run her over. I'm <laughs> like, too easy. did you really? <laughs> there was a super cool, like, like added detail, I guess, um, which I didn't expect to happen was remember the woman that he chokes and with OCD and stuff and he just ties her to the back of the fucking van yeah and drives but then when he flips her body over when they're back in the thing her whole face yeah is, she's just her whole body's been sanded down yeah that was, I, I was crazy like, I had never seen I, obviously I've never seen anyone kill like that before but I had never I would never expect I've never seen anyone do that 
go to that level of detail like it was yeah i had actually seen that clip before like on youtube oh, and stuff really? and uh, i didn't know it was from that movie yeah and I, I didn't remember until he flipped her over. And I was like, that is wild. Because she was bleeding a lot. I was like, that is a lot of blood. <laughs> like, literally a blood trail from the house to his freezer. It was so fucking funny. And then the um, rain just comes and you're yeah. like, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. Um, the family thing was when it got kind of fucked up. I was yeah. like, oh, something okay. He's taking it to a new level funny. now. Yeah. Something that was cool, not cool, nothing about it was cool, but cool about that was... Did you notice, right, so they get out of the car and he gives them all red caps. Yeah. I think that was because if they got to the woods, he'd be able to see them easy. Yeah. Like, the whole point was, like, that, that it's an easier target than if they all have red caps on. Because when he kills all of them, he takes it off and throws it away. So I thought that was, like, like a super subtle detail that is not shoved in your face at all. Like, you could gloss over it, you know, but I was... Because he doesn't, he doesn't use it. He never sees a red cap and goes, oh, now I can shoot there, you know? Yeah. But I thought it was a, a cool detail. Um... But yeah, that was fucked scene. Holy shit. Yeah, man. He just blew that kid's leg off. That was oh, fuck insane. Yeah, that was His kneecap just disintegrated. Yeah, has lunch with the corpses and makes mm. the woman feed it. Oh, Christ. It was wild. Yeah. Also, shout out to that woman for saying 12 was her favorite number. She should have tricked the whole system and said 8 oh. billion. Yeah. <laughs> Infinity. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um... But surprisingly, that wasn't even the worst part, or like the part that I, uh, that kind of affected me the most, I guess. Yeah. The part that that affected me the most was definitely when he chopped your one's titties off. That was, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> slaps it on the police car. Yeah, I was like that. I was like that. It's not cool, man. Like I, I was, I was grabbing my chest. Yeah, that was fucking nuts. And then he made it into his wallet, man. That was so. Cool. Yeah. Because I was thinking, I was like, what did he do with the other one? Um, did you just take it home? But, yeah, uh, literally. Got it cured. Yeah. Sort it up. Crazy. Um, I was going to say, also about the, do you remember when he was, I, this was kind of more in your face, just with the, the hunting one, he was talking about how, like, you know, you take out the younger ones first, and I guess that was kind of mm. the first, the forced part. But when he was talking to, when he made the kid shoot, uh, he shot the woman in the, or he shot the, he shot the woman, he shot the deer like the poster of the deer in the back leg and he was like oh they'd be able to move the action and then when he shot the the kids they obviously weren't able to move they fucking died but when she shot him she only got a like a body wound and she was able to move then the same way that deer would be able to move yeah and getting the thing it was like a callback to that which was cool um something else happened to him um uh the <laughs> The the fucking policeman who was just doing his patrols and you and he was like, if I were you, I would check every square inch of this room. <laughs> and I was like, that's ballsy, man. That's ballsy. <laughs> Fair enough, though. Oh, it was fucked up. Or, and um, he goes, and he goes, uh, which are one that he chopped the titties off? He was like, yeah. um, I killed sixty people. And then, like five minutes later, he's like, I killed sixty-one <laughs> people. And then she's like. Why'd you kill 60? And then he's like, you're such a fucking idiot. Yeah. I thought it was so fucking funny. Man, he... Like, Are you fucking dumb, dude? Yeah, but she literally was. And he kept yeah, saying know, it too. Yeah. Simple. Yeah, he was treating her like shit, but it was also kind of true. But also, the woman at the start, the first incident, who gets in a stranger's car and tells them how to kill you? Yeah. Ever. Oh, fast. <laughs> and and he goes, up. he goes, uh, I didn't know at the time, but I actually parked the car over the border. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> This guy, literally the luckiest guy in the world. Yeah. Oh, that's so fucking dumb. Um, yeah, that was a really annoying. A very good movie. Yeah, I didn't blame her. I didn't blame him killing her. All the yeah, other she ones. She was sure, very annoying. She was a bitch. Uh, what else happened? I loved how the freezer got. Even between incidents, there was more and more people you could see, and you could see the old people that he had killed. Yeah. Like on the shelves and stuff like that. Uh, mm. I thought that was, like, the boy, the grumpy boy that he made happy was constantly, every time you walked in, you could see him sat in the same spot. Yeah. Um, what was the other thing? He kept talking about the negative of the pictures. And, oh, yeah. And yeah, how you could, how, light. yeah, how, like, yeah. the light actually made darkness or something. Yeah. I thought he that was wild. And then at the very end, when he fell into the pit, it turned negative. Yeah, it turned negative. I didn't understand what the fuck was going on then, but. 
I just thought it was really cool. Did you own Hellbound? But, um, yeah, it was super interesting. Definitely. Um, ratings. Ooh. I don't like that. You guys enjoyed that movie a lot more than I did. It's fair. I think you're being a bit of a douche. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> um. What was your problem with it? Did you just find it too long or boring or something? Oh. You're lagging. See oh. The, oh, the start that again. I said I I didn't enjoy it as much as you guys did. I didn't see like the whole deeper meaning, yo, that you guys were. Um, Man, it uh, yeah. Which, see, the thing about it is, normally I wouldn't. I'm normally when a movie, when a movie goes from the realm of possibility to the realm of impossibility, the way that one did, um. Or like I I probably shouldn't say impossibility. I don't know hell probably could be real who fucking knows man yeah. I, personally i believe in odin but uh <laughs> you know the realm of like unpro you know what i mean but yeah, uh yeah. when a movie goes like that i generally don't like it no but it was very in your face it was not hiding it and i kind of no. liked that yeah it was it all the deep stuff throughout it even even in between art when he showed like brains light the lamppost thing he had there was a couple other ones throughout when he was talking about history and uh there was one yeah the, the uh, paintings and stuff yeah the paintings and the roots. that was another thing the paint when he went into the underworld they like reenacted one of the paintings oh, yeah. and i thought that was very very strange but I, again that's probably like if you look at what the painting they reenacted was probably made perfect sense as to what yeah was going on, you know and i think that was a lot where it was it was a stuff where if you were super into that stylistically kind of stuff and you could you could enjoy it but also it really it helped you along but they literally explained why he felt the way and why it was similar to these sort of things and i i kind of enjoyed how it was like you could feel smart while they'll also while, while then also telling you exactly what's going on you know mm. give me a second i'll be back yeah um uh, yes um I just looked it up and the budget was only eight million. It's pretty yeah, it good. Was only kind of thing, yeah. mm, I'm trying to look up to see what other movies um the same director made and I don't recognize any of them. No. Um, he got, um Antichrist. He got kicked out of um the I think it was Sundance. I'm not sure if it was Sundance. I was I was doing the same, I was reading up on it. And uh, I don't remember what he said. It was something about someone had been killed or people had been killed. Oh, it was something to do with Jews, I think, or Jewish ones. Um, basically, you know the same way where Kanye just said slavery was a choice? I think he kind of just said the Jewish people should have just left or something. Or I don't know. He made yeah, some, some, some weird comment. Thing. Mm -hmm. um, and he got kicked out for two years or something like that. And then that was his first movie back that won thing the actor was incredible yes just like he was perfect for the role he really was so fucking good and i would i would watch him again playing the exact similar role like mm. and it was good because he was the only actor that was in it throughout like there was yeah, yeah. you know he was the star of the show the whole way through um so yeah i'd give it an, a solid nine out of ten. Nine out of ten crazy um because i'd be similar like I'm, I'm scared to give it a good rating I'll go I'll go eight point five. That's fair. I'm trying to think like I don't I need for these for these kind of things, like I need a movie that's a that's like a one and I need a movie that's a ten to put them between. And I can't yeah, think thing, I can't yeah. think of a ten movie. I probably could if I like there's movies that I really, really, really love. Like Interstellar would be one of them. I'd consider that a like a nine yeah, or a nine point five. Yeah, that's those where they add up where you like it to per like it's like i like it but it's also really good like mm. i love Jura i would give jurassic park a 10 out of 10 but i know it's not a 10 out of 10 movie like you know what i mean yeah but, just because I love but it is a personal thing like yeah well. that's the thing like it's it's like it's similar to that um so yeah it's true but you haven't so, had a 
Yeah, go on. I would have been me giving Cove a bit of a low rating. I haven't actually had one. Man, fucking shark at us, stupid ass. That was unreal, man. That was a nine. Um. Uh, so okay, we go back to the whiteboard. We just keep going with the whiteboard, I think. Yeah. Um. Be easier. I have to add. You kind of need to add a name. Like, there's a duo of people there. I think. Um. Oh, I'm trying to think of the name. Uh, the something of Deborah Logan. What was it? Uh, the. Uh, it's that. There's, it's that movie, there's a really, really famous clip that I'm sure you've seen, and it's from that movie, and ever since I've seen the clip, I've wanted to watch the movie, but I'm terrified that it's going to terrify me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will I'll show you the clip afterwards, but uh, it's a movie that I really want to watch. The Taking of Deborah Logan, is it? The taking of yeah, it's the taking of Durban Logan. Taking of it. yeah, taking of Durban. Um, all right, that's replacing the house. Cool. And then we'll RNG. Or random number generator the next one. But 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 Uh, do we want? Do we want to just keep going with fuck movies, or will we keep the other ones? Man, I kind of like the fuck movies. I, I don't know. Why? I can just do a one in five one. Yeah. Uh, wh oh shit. One in five. Okay. One, two. Three. Okay. Before you do that, name out the fuck movies. I want to okay. know what they are. So we have the Green Inferno. Now I don't know what any of these are other than Tusk, mm -hmm. which I think you told me to put on last week. I know it. I seen it when I was like thirteen, but I don't really remember a lot about it. I just know exactly like what it's about. A green. The Green Inferno. I don't understand what this movie is. I put it in everything I could have. Uh, yeah, okay, I have no idea. I have Mar Martyr F slash E, um, Tusk, Revenge, which I, for some reason I remembered, I remember the name of it, but I'm not sure. And then Taking a Deborah Logan and Bite. Bite? Bite. Okay. That one looks fucking disgusting, like similar to, um, what, what's the other one? The woman, like, but you know, the woman kind of had a little bit of disgusting in, but it wasn't that that bad. This one looks. Uh oh, okay, yeah, I just looked it up. It looks. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's yeah, just centipede in her mouth. Ugh. Not look at that. 58% though. Oh. That one we just watched was uh, 60, I think. She turns into an insect like creature. Bro, stop reading. Alright, sorry. Um, Alright. So yeah, we'll continue with the fuck shit. Uh, Peter doesn't get a vote because he's not here. So. Tell me what movie I have to watch. Uh, yeah, sorry. I was trying to find the name of that. And what was it? Martyr F E. F slash E. Uh, there's, a, there's a fuck movie called Martyrs. Martyr. Wait, that doesn't seem like it. What about Cannibal Holocaust? <laughs> <laughs> what? I have one here. Yeah, I, I've already seen them, I don't really... They're kind of... Um, They're just dis Oh, fuck yeah, I just... I thought about it and nearly... They're just disgusting in the sense of I think about what... I just draw it. Yeah. Not what happens in the movie, I just put myself in... Um, it must be just martyrs that I'm thinking of. Yeah, I don't know. What, yeah, you'll have to search your brain to um <gasps> to remember what the F E is. Martyr yeah. forever. Yeah, unless I put it like I put it in as like uh, how would you say uh, like fucking evil. I don't know. Would never say that. Um, <laughs> Fucking ew! Nah, he's not here. Uh, 
Yeah. And then we'll go on to uh, haul some content because I have to go after that oh, for a little oh. bit. Um, I'll just sit here and carry the thing. Um, okay. Uh, We have revenge. <laughs> Revengi. I think I know that one. I think that one's on Netflix. Oh, I looked it up and the TV show came up. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah. Uh, wait. Yeah, that's the one. Twenty. Is it a thriller horror? Okay, that's well, not the one yeah. I was thinking about. Uh, okay. I'll I've watch got that. 93% on Rotten Tomatoes, 81% on Metacritic. Oh, that's great though, TV. Jesus. Never heard of that before. Uh, oh, there's a shocking act. <sighs> okay, I'm not reading anymore. Frick! That guy, that guy makes um, the guy from Thing makes. Fuck! Oh, Nymphal Maniac. Have you ever heard of that movie? No. Uh, it's a movie. I've, I've. Don't watch it. It's a movie about a woman who, sexually harasses and gets turned down by Thing. Oh, she's that's cool. Like she just puts fish hooks in and shit like that. It's Ew. Cool. I kind of got like, shivers. Uh, you said that. Okay, I need wholesome content. Uh, oh. I beta. I beta. No, I, I beta. I beta. Um, I have no interest in that. Um. What was I gonna say? Don't know. Do you wanna? Will you still be on in like a half an hour? Yeah. Do you wanna pause? I'll pause the recording and uh, I'll be back in like a half an hour and. <laughs> All right. Intermission over. Wholesome content time. I need to load it. He needs to load the wholesome content, but that's okay. Uh. I left to go walk my dog, because she was very, ang uh, what's the word, angsty, she was like stressing me out, she was looking at me, she was like, bring me for a walk, you little bitch boy, and I was like, hold on, I'm doing a podcast, but she didn't understand, so. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Alright, here we go. Peter, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Alright, this is there the... This is the the depressing one, so. Say that we I think we already have this. Nah, man. Watch the face oh, after this. Max 480. Okay, here we go. That's fine. It adds to it. Can you turn it down a tiny bit? Scientists at Tulane University's Primate Research Center have now they have caught a gorilla that someday it will die. Kate Meredith has more in the lab report. Thanks, Sam. In an historic first. A team of primatologists have succeeded in teaching quizzes a western lowland gorilla the topic of mortality and his inevitable doom. Lana Burroughs uh -huh. and Philip Townsend are the researchers leading the project. When we first started with Kate, he, he was just a normal, happy ape, not a care in the world. The first thing we did was we taught him patterns like right. red block, blue block, green block, over and over. Yes. Uh, then it became a pattern of gorilla born, gorilla grow, gorilla die, over and over. Right. Jesus! <laughs> Jesus. Photographs Jesus. of dead, dying gorillas while communicating the phrases you someday and no choice. It took thousands of replicas but Finkley finally became cognizant of the correlation between the cell and the decomposing pile of hair and flesh in the photo. Finkley shared his nice. thesis in a confessional after completing each exercise. That was a great moment. <laughs> Quigley also <laughs> painting pictures like these almost every day. To make sure Quigley retains the awareness of his own demise to keep them several hours per day, reinforcing the certainty of death's arrival. Quigley, you die. You will die soon. Researchers say at first, Quigley could only communicate rudimentary theories about his own death. 
but he soon moved on to expressing more complex emotions, like indifference and self-hatred. Excuse me, Trevor. And just a few days ago, Phillips Housing and his colleagues even witnessed what they believe to have been a panic attack in prison. He was letting out these angry cries and banging his head against the wall, and I just thought, he did it. The claim is that he refused to resort to alcohol or even try to kill itself in as little as a decade. The scientists next plan to test whether the results of the surgery can be replicated with other species. They are in the initial stages of teaching bunny rabbits that they will all die. Where were those dolls? You said where? <laughs> the lab report from May Carrier. Scientists in Britain are conducting a similar study, teaching a mouse with a human ear grafted to its back what a tree grew. <laughs> there was a couple um, funny uh, things at the bottom. Things, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Quickly, you die. You. I don't know. Thousands of replications, but oh, here, this was one of them. I didn't know Searches then showed quickly. The track was doing an air as happy as some hairs. While communicating with phrases you can by a delusion of poor people. Reinforcing the short. Will die soon. Oh yeah, so look, Dorchester uh, residents plan to become first gay astronaut. Begins wait with learning. He was already an astronaut, and he's learning how to be gay. Yeah. So obviously it's not real. Because it's the onion. <laughs> yeah, the onion news. <laughs> One point seven billion subscribers. Uh Link fear of impending death. Previously non accessible. Only accessible to people. They are known for their credibility. <laughs> Pecca to euthanize the teaching about death. <laughs> Apparently, they said that. Yeah, they did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did they? Yeah. People with vastly informing a religion. <laughs> <laughs> These are thrilling times. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, though. Could you imagine? <laughs> I had a mental breakdown. I couldn't think. <laughs> we did it. Oh. Man. Shout out to Quigley. Good stuff. Does anybody have any other awesome content? I don't think we do. Yeah, hey, I don't think there's fish. anything else. Yeah, we can just show the fish. Hang on, That's a pretty good fish. A little bit in general. I think so. Cricket noises. Uh, so this is just the best fish ever. Best fish ever. <laughs> <laughs> You come in straight as it was turning. <laughs> uh, and that's our wrap. Uh, thanks for watching Brennan's Veg Home Slices. Uh, yeah. Uh, we, do we, uh, do we, 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 okay, we, hold on. Okay, Turn off the stream on. now. Turn I can off hear the stream twice. twice. I can hear myself twice. Uh, I don't know how to stop. I did it. Um, Peter, did you rate the movie? Oh, I never actually rated it. I'll give it a five and a half. All right, so that's an average of uh, eleven out of ten. If you say Cloverfield, I'll come around. Still bomb Cloverfield. <laughs> um, yeah, me and John gave it. I gave it eight point five, and John gave it nine. A nine, though. Mm, it's just because really we're good. big brain, I guess. It's probably a movie for wrinkly brain people and smooth <laughs> and True. So it makes sense. Uh, uh, right, right, did right, you tell right. him what movie we have to watch next? Yeah, I did. Yeah, we were watching Revenge, 2018, thriller horror. 2018, Dope. thriller horror. All right. Um, do we have anything else to talk about? I think we're pretty uh pretty set. Much it, yeah. So we need this episode to blow up so we can all quit our jobs. Oh, Jesus um, Christ. do your thing, internet. <laughs> Arguably one of the worst episodes. True. <laughs> But sure, look, if they like this one, that means the promise for the future is even greater. True, true. Um, I hope you enjoy our, our joy, enjoyed, I'm retarded. I hope you enjoyed our rants <laughs> about um, work. Oh. And uh, I hope you have a... Die. Uh,